Sufjan Stevens is one of the most talented and prolific artists of our generation, which is really great for current fans, but for new fans, that means his discography can be pretty intimidating to tackle. Don't you worry, because I have developed a foolproof guide to Sufjan Stevens, and I'm going to tell you how you can get into Sufjan Stevens. But before we get into that, let's first talk about who the hell this guy is. Sufjan Stevens was born on July 1st, 1975, which means this dude is pretty freaking old. He's very religious. He's gay, I think. Not that that really matters. <laughs> Sufjan also grew up in Michigan, which is going to be important later on. And the name Sufjan is Armenian, and it means comes with a sword, which will not be important later on. The first entry point that you can take into Sufjan Stevens' discography is, of course, Illinois. This is if you're into, like, Disney soundtracks. <laughs> this was my very first experience with Sufjan Stevens, and I think it's probably the best way to get into his discography because this is one of the most magical and unique listening experiences and his entire discography. It's kind of classified as like a chamber pop album, indie folk, like I said, Disney musical. There's a great mix of sound in this album because you got some songs that are just kind of softer, just Sufjan and his guitar, like Kashmir Pulaski Day or John Wayne Gacy Jr. There's also songs that are just like nice piano songs in there. But then you got these songs that are just epic orchestral pieces like Chicago or Come On and Feel the Illinois. This is honestly one of the best albums of all time. And if you haven't listened to it yet, then what do you do? even doing just go listen to this album this album just like talks about like the history of illinois some fun facts about it and some like personal stuff with sufjan in the state like i could probably pass a pop quiz on illinois and i haven't even been to the state but yeah i mean if you're into like kind of like i guess indie rock vibes then check this one out this is probably your best entry point and if you like this album then you'll definitely like michigan because this is the album that came out before illinois and it's a part of the same project the 50 states project. Sufjan was like, I'm gonna make an album about every state in America and he only made two. Michigan, of course, is the state that Sufjan grew up in. Lyrically, there's a lot of stories about Michigan and everything like that. Same as Illinois, basically. In terms of sound, it definitely keeps the same vibe as Illinois except it's a lot less grandiose, I guess. But it definitely still keeps that Disney soundtrack vibe, so if you like Illinois, you'll definitely like this album. Honestly, this album, for me, kind of lives in the shadow of Illinois. However, there's still amazing tracks in this thing, like Oh Detroit, there's Flint, and then of course the album closer, Vito's Ordination Song, which is like probably the most comfiest song that I've ever listened to in my life. If you like these two albums and you still need to scratch that Disney musical itch, then check out the BQE. I haven't listened to this album, but I skimmed through it, and it sounds like just an instrumental version of Illinois and Michigan, so you'll probably like this album. I'll probably like this album, I just haven't listened to it yet. And another great album to listen to if you like these albums is All Delighted People. It's not as Disney soundtrack as these albums, but it's still a really great album. There's some great orchestral pieces in there, especially in the title track and the, the final track. And it's also a great kind of transitional piece into the next section of his discography that we're going to be talking about. But before you check that out, if you want to listen to A Sun Came, you can. It's kind of weird. It's his first project. It's good sometimes. <laughs> All right, so say you're not really too into Disney musicals and you want to listen to something else. Maybe you like more singer-songwriter, folkier type stuff. Listen to Carrie and Lowell. This should be the first album that you listen to. This is also like one of the best albums of all time. It's incredibly sad, but it's incredible. This album was made after the death of Sufjan's mom, so a lot of the lyrics have to do with that. Not something that you want to listen to in the middle of your day if you're trying to have a good day. The song 4th of July is like, like this if you cry every time vibes, you know? <laughs> Anyone remember that meme? This album has a very stripped back vibe to it. It's just Sufjan and his guitar. He's just whispering into your ear these sad, sad vocals. It's very atmospheric, and it's a great start into his discography if you're looking to cry on your first listen. <laughs> and then, of course, if you liked Carrie and Lowell, then check out Seven Swans, because Seven Swans is basically the same vibe, except you can listen to it in the middle of the day, and it might actually make your day a little bit better. I like a lot of the songs on this thing. A lot of these songs put me in a good mood, like the song uh, In Devil's Territory. That song makes me float, dude. It's basically the same vibe with, like, Sufjan and his guitar, except there is more instrumentation in this. It can be a little bit more layered than Carrie and Lowell at times, especially in songs like In Devil's Territory and uh, Sister. Sister is a very Larry track with these awesome electric guitars. So if you're looking to scratch the itch of soft, sweet Sufjan vocals with a soft, sweet guitar, then check out this album. And if you want more singer-songwriter stuff, then check out A Beginner's Mind. This is a collaborative project with uh, Angelo D'Agostin, which is another fantastic folk singer. This is one of my favorite albums of last year. This album, I feel like, has a much more lush production than the previous 
previous two albums, but it still keeps that singer-songwriter folky type vibe. A lot of stripped back songs on this thing. And also, if you're into old movies and stuff like that, a lot of the lyrics and songs have metaphors to a bunch of older movies that I have never seen. So, <laughs> and then there's also that one album that's like a uh, extension of Carrie and Lowell called uh, The Greatest Gift, which is just some like demos, some unreleased tracks, and some remixes of Carrie and Lowell that you might like if you like Carrie and Lowell. I don't know, I've never listened to it. <laughs> and then there's also a Carrie and Lowell live album that's pretty good, but I've never listened to it. This is the problem. I, I mean, even though I'm a big fan of his, he's got so many albums that even I haven't listened to everything that he's made. If you're a new listener and you started with this route here and you want to find your way to get over to this route, then listen to all all delighted people because I think that's a nice little way to bridge the gap between this stuff and this stuff but if you're not into folky stuff and you want to just listen to something crazy start with Age of Ots which is a wild wild album once again this is like one of the best albums of all time Sufjan has made like three of the best albums of all time he's a talented guy what can I say Sufjan got really experimental with this album it still has like a orchestral vibe to it like there's definitely a great mix of orchestration and electronic elements which I really enjoy about this album and it sounds very grandiose just like Illinois as one person on rate your music described it it's like Disney soundtrack mixed with Aphex Twin this album can fit into a large array of genres like from like glitch pop to like electronic pop to folkatronic to chamber pop to art pop there's a lot of stuff that you could use to describe this album lyrically I bet there's some interesting things going on in here with the lyrics however every time I listen to this album I'm so like encapsulated by the instrumental it's so hard for me to focus on these lyrics so i don't know anything about the lyrics but it's probably about love faith death typical sufjan stevens stuff also i cannot mention this album without mentioning the impossible soul track literally his magnum opus is one song that's 25 minutes and you should listen to it i think the next thing to do after you listen to this album if you like the electronic vibes is to listen to the ascension this album is definitely a lot more tamer than age of odds it's definitely not as abrasive and in your face i think at times but i don't think it's as fun as age of odds and also this album is just so long in this album, Sufjan kind of ditches the orchestral vibes of Age of Odds and really just kind of dives further into territories of like electro pop and glitch pop and stuff like that and IDM too. Not every track on this album is great. Uh, I think Video Game is a pretty cheesy track and also America does not need to be 15 minutes long. That doesn't mean there's not good tracks in this album. There's definitely a lot of fantastic tracks in this album. Like the opener, Make Me an Offer, I Cannot Refuse, great track, Die Happy, the second half of it, fantastic, mind-blowing, and also the transition from Death Star to Goodbye to All That is like the best thing that I've ever heard in music. And then another good electronic album that Sufjan Stevens has made is Planetarium. I don't necessarily vibe with this album a whole lot, but it's definitely worth checking out. This is a collaborative project with Nico Muley, Bryce Dessner, and James McAllister. And each song off of this album is kind of based off of a different planet or something to do with space. So if you're into space, you might really enjoy this album. If you can block out a planetarium for like an hour, listen to this album as you're there because like that will be a fantastic experience another great album in Sufjan's electronic discography is enjoy your rabbit if you're into IDM you'll definitely like this album because this album is just like if Sufjan just went full IDM it's all instrumental and another instrumental album is Aporia which is basically just like a synth pop ambient album which is really great for like background music if you're doing something you just need something in the background throw this album on Convocations is another instrumental album that Sufjan did with some electronic vibes and I think it's the least memorable album that he's ever made so check it out if you're into ambient stuff but i don't really think it's worth it <laughs> there's still so much more holy moly dude if you're into rap then definitely check out his rap group sisyphus that's right sufjan has a hip-hop rap group he does it with serengeti and sunlux their self-titled album is really really good i love their self-titled album and also he has christmas albums like what <laughs> basically if you like this stuff then you should listen to this christmas album and then if you like this stuff then you should listen to this christmas this album. There's probably so much more that I'm forgetting too. If you get through all of this, then you can find the other stuff on your own time. <laughs> and if you're a current listener, then let me know how you got into Sufjan Stevens because I'm very curious. And also, if you want to see how I would rank each Sufjan Stevens album, check out this video right there. Probably some hot takes in there. I don't know. Let me know.